What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Bees, with capital Bees, bringing you another video. My DMs have been blowing up recently since I started posting more. Everybody's asking questions. What are those secrets? What are those secrets? They're coming. I promise you, they're coming, and it's going to blow your mind on some of them. But I honestly have to take it step by step. I have to release it in a series because if I just throw certain things at you, you're going to be like, well, that doesn't make sense. How do you do it? But if you understand the foundation first, then you'll understand the real game at the top. So with all those questions that, that has been coming in, I decided to do something a little bit different. I asked some people, hey, send me a quick video asking your question, and then I'll, I'll make a video and answer it. So let's see what we got today. Hey, Capital Bs, I have a question. How do you finance a car through a credit union? Now that is a great question. So let's start with the basics first, right? Uh, you want to pull your credit report about three months, you know, beforehand, before you start shopping for a car. And you want to understand what's on there and maybe beef up your credit score a little bit by adding a trade line or an auth some authorized users. Now, I won't get into, into that too deep, but if you are interested to learn more about you know how to add authorized users in order to boost your uh, credit score, uh, drop a comment below, like and share this, and then I'll make sure to make a video on that one. Then, of course, you wanna know the value of the car before you start shopping so that you don't overpay, right? So use sources like NADA Guide, Kelly Blue Book, and Auto Trader. Next step, which is the most important step since uh, you mentioned a credit union. That's, a, that's what makes it a really good question because I highly recommend don't go shopping for a car at the dealership and for financing at the dealership. Instead, join, make sure you're part of a credit union. One of my favorites is Navy Federal Credit Union, right? Uh, I'll drop a video on that too because it's one of the best out there in terms of giving high limits, but you wanna make sure you have a relationship with them. All that means is that you're working with them. You have some money in your account, you're getting some uh, direct deposits, ACHs, um, you know, you're spending a little bit here and there. Uh, so you just establish a, a, a relationship with them. Maybe you get a secured loan through them, which is just based off of your own money anyway, right? It's a good way to build up your credit report. Um, and with those methods, by establishing a relationship with them, then they're likely to give you a higher limit for your auto loan or for your credit cards or anything like that. Now, of course, if you have like a 750 credit score above, it doesn't really matter if you establish a relationship with them first. You could just go straight ahead and apply. But for you know those who are below that, you want to build up that little relationship so that you can then you know increase your chances of getting the best results from them afterwards. So since we're talking about Navy Federal Credit Union, we'll just keep using them as in, the, in this example. So you want to get pre-approved, pre-approved. I'm sorry <laughs> for your loan uh, with them. They have a tool. I think it's a uh, NavyFederalAutoBuying.com. Um, but you, so you just go through there, you apply, they'll let you know exactly how much you're pre-approved for, right? And if you followed those other steps before, you'll get the higher limits. Um, then once you get pre-approved, they basically give you a check, like a blank check. You know what your limit is already because they told you, but then they give you a blank check to then take that to the dealership. Okay, so now let's get to the nitty gritty, right? Because that part's simple. All you do is you go ahead, get pre-approved, You'll know what your limit is. You'll see if that matches the amount of the car that you're looking for. Uh, and then you'll find your dealer that you want to go to if it's a used car, new car, whatever, because you already know how much you have available. And now you're going to go to... Now, let me say, let me start by saying this. I don't like really talking about how to get things like cars, but because that was a great question because of how it relates to uh, credit unions and why you should use them first... I figured let me give you some tips on how to get cars at the best price. The main reason I don't like talking about cars so much is because it's a liability, it's not an asset. I try to buy things that are going to be assets, right? So now if you're buying a car that you're gonna then rent out on Turo or, or Uber or something and make some actual revenue flow coming in from that liability, then okay, now we talking. But a lot of people ask me questions about how to get these liabilities and you know I don't want to share that information too much but 
It's a great question, so we have to talk about the best way to approach it. So now we're at the dealership. You have your check in hand. Make sure you keep it in your pocket, first and foremost. Do not, absolutely do not walk into that dealership talking about, hey, I'm paying in cash, or hey, I got this check and I'm ready to go. A lot of people think that, oh, that may give me some leverage power, you know, some more leverage, some buying power, because they're gonna think, oh, this guy got it all together and he got, you know, money ready to go. But no, trust me, if you do this, you're gonna lose all your leverage and they're gonna charge you even more than if you were coming in for financing. Let me explain why. First, you know, I'm not suggesting that you lie about how you're going to pay. I'm just saying don't tell them yet, right? Because if you do, you lose leverage, okay? So just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk you through ways, the exact type of phrasing that you want to use when you're speaking to uh, the salesman at the dealership, and then also when you go back into financing. The only reason the dealer wants to know how you're going to pay is because they want to know how to set you up later. If the salesman starts bringing up, okay, well, how are you planning to pay? Oh, you know, we have this program right now and all of that. If they start talking about um, pricing and how you're going to pay, just say, listen, I'll see what your finance team has to offer after we, you know, negotiate price, right? And after I see the, the model that I'm interested in. If they persist, just say, listen, I don't talk about finances outside of a private room with someone who has the authority to sign off the car, uh, you know, from the financing perspective. So just be firm and strong about that. As you can see, I never lied. I didn't say anything about, you know, oh, I'm gonna finance it, yet I have cash, yet I have my check. I didn't say anything. I'm, I'm not lying. I'm just letting them know that I'm not gonna discuss it here. I will discuss it with the finance team and the appropriate setting. Okay, so what it really boils down to the car dealerships, their business model has changed over the years because of the internet. Everyone is able to see exact pricing. Everyone's able to compare pricing uh, fairly quickly and go exactly to where they want to go, which meets their uh, needs. So because of that, they can't hit you. They had to lower their prices so that you could come in. So they can't hit you on that sale price. So they found another way to hit you. And where they're going to hit you is in the finance department. Because if they know that you utter those words, cash or, you know, blank check at the beginning of the process, they're going to know that they can't hit you in the finance department at the end of the process, which is where their current model is. So they'll say, we have to stay firm on the actual sale price and you won't be able to negotiate a good deal. Think about it. When you're in finance department, what is the thing that they always say? So how much do you want to pay? Right. They don't say you start asking them about the price. They, they were like, well, what do you want to pay? And you'll say something like, oh, about 500 a month. And they'll say, OK, no problem. Then what they're going to do is work in all their fees. They may actually get it to you at 300, what would have been 300 a month. But because you said 500, they're like, all right, well, now we're going to we, we're going to hit multiple lenders. We're going to see who we can get it at the cheapest. We're going to throw in more of our own fees in order to get you to that 500, even though you were supposed to be paying less. So that's why all dealers focus on monthly payments. What are your monthly payments? So never shift your mind, just shift your mind, right? Shift your mindset. Focus on what is the sale price. Always keep asking that, keep pushing that. Well, what's the total price? Plus tax, plus tag, everything, right? Just keep asking that. Don't worry about the monthly cost. And I'll show you a, a few more things that you could say to kind of steer the conversation the right way. Worse yet, sometimes they'll extend the length of the loan. They'll say, oh, well, the only way we could get you to 500 is if you're doing a 60 month loan instead of the, you know, 36 month. And then you're going to be hooked for a longer period of time paying way more. But that's how they get their fees in. So to do all of this, they need a car loan to bury all those fees, bury all those little hidden things. So cash buyers or those with a, a blank check from your credit union that was already pre-approved, that ruins all of their plans. And then that's when they get upset and stay hard on the only other place that they could potentially make some more money is the sale price. So just look at it again. Car dealers make their money off of the sale price, accessories, and then finally, the finance office, the loan, right? So you're a savvy buyer, you are financially literate, and you're not gonna be taken advantage of, 
right? So don't mention anything about what you have and how you're buying. Just keep, don't focus on the whole monthly payments thing. Focus on that sale price. What is the sale price? The reason people get stuck at dealerships for hours upon hours these days is because the majority of their money is being made after sale price negotiations during that period. So that's why you're stuck there so long because they're trying to finagle how you're gonna, you know, work these fees in and potentially still give you the uh, monthly payment that you want. Okay, so I'm sure a lot of people are gonna say, well, what exactly should I say to them? How do I keep them from going back to the whole monthly payments? Well, I promise you, I'm gonna explain that too. Let me give you the exact words that I use to get the best prices at every car dealership. So first thing I do is I ask the finance officer, please add any tax, title, and license fees to the sales price of the car. That way, you know what the total is. And if they try to shift the, the conversation back to your finance options, just say, before that, I need these added in so that I know what the total is, then we could talk about payment options. You're still not lying about anything, you're just not letting them know. And that's why I said payment options, because hey, cash or that blank check is a payment option. They're just thinking about of the loan. Finance people at car dealerships hate that. They don't want to talk about that final price. They want to get into like menu options and uh, ways that you can protect your investment. As if this huge hunk of metal is an investment. It's a liability, right? So why would you want to add more money to the cost of your liability? Most finance officers will then realize that you're a savvy consumer, right? And they'll start to move the conversation along. But some are novices and, you know, they're going to keep pushing and I'm just going to push right back. That's, you know, you have to be willing to walk out. That's why you got that check and that's why you did your homework. Because now you can, you know, leverage it a little bit and show them that you're not going to be pushed around. Okay, so now they actually start putting things together for you, right? And you may look in and you'll see like a document fee for... 600 bucks, right? And I'm just gonna draw a line through it and I'm say, I'm only willing to pay 50. I'm only willing to pay 100 for it. If you, you know, if they've been nice and you wanna give them a little bit extra, I'm only willing to pay 100 for it, right? And you know, they may play hardball and they may say, well, you know, we have to charge everybody that same price. And you know, that's when you go back to your salesman and say, listen, I'm really interested in it. Uh, it sounds good. I'm ready to, to, to pull the trigger, but you know, you need to lower that sales price by 600 bucks for me because there's a document fee in there that I'm not willing to pay. So if you lower the sales price a little bit, it'll balance it off. So now you're using the sales price in leverage, right? So that's what they were trying to do before. They were trying to say, oh, the sale price will, will bump it here and there and then they're gonna mess with you on the finance side. But now you go back to the only place that they have any leverage is that sales price, right? And you, you counter offer and you say, well, uh, I reduce my offer by that 600 and you know, I'm not willing to pay it. I'm not willing to pay that document fee in there, right? And now some dealers are gonna get hard, play hardball, like I said, but that's when you have to be willing to walk out. You have the power, remember that. Okay, so ultimately, remember, never mention cash, never mention that check, right? You don't have to lie about it, but you just hold your cards. If you're a poker player, you know what I mean. Right? You just hold your cards until it's time. Okay, and then when it is time, you're gonna say, so this is essentially the out the door price, right? And they're gonna say, yeah, right? And you're now you've locked in what that out the door price is. And you may even ask them, okay, well, they, they're gonna ask you how much down you wanna put, how much you wanna put down. And you're gonna say something like, all right, well, figure it out with half down on a 36 month loan, right? Now, I know I've been talking about not getting a loan this whole time, but sometimes it's actually good. You know, it's even good for your credit profile. So I may get a small loan. Maybe I only got a, a $50,000 check from the credit union, right? But I'm getting a $60,000 car, right? I'm just playing with some round numbers here. So now I say, okay, maybe I'll put down $50,000. Then I'll get that $10,000 loan from them it'll be very minimal in terms of uh, the payments and my credit pro credit profile is going to look strong because I have another trade line on there. I have something else that is going to feed into showing that I'm good at paying off debt, right? So this is how we manipulate the game. Remember, 
don't be afraid of credit. You're using it for your benefit. Just by getting that little short-term loan, you're strengthening your credit profile, credit score, and we're gonna use that for other ways to gain more uh, capital and then leverage it to make more money later on, right? So now after uh, you, you tell them, okay, 36-month uh, loan, and you tell them uh, you're gonna put half down or you're gonna put the 50,000 down or something like that, and you say you tell them to figure it out, they're gonna come back with the final offer, right? And at that point, because you already know what that out the door price is. At that point, you say, okay, let's write it up. Let's go with it. If they say, you know, if there's any issues and, you know, they're not trying to allow you to continue forward, you already know what that out the door price is. And you can say, okay, well, I'm just going to pay the whole thing at this time. Right? So you didn't lie at all. You, you were forthcoming overall because you wanted to know what that uh, sale price is, that out the door price is. And that's what you focused on the entire time. Okay. So we strayed a little bit away from our, the typical topics that I want to talk about, which are how to generate revenue, but we do have to buy cars sometimes. So it's, it's at least important that we know how to be smart and savvy consumers, smart and savvy shoppers and get the best price all the time. With these dealers, you may still have some questions. And if you do drop a comment below, make sure you like this post. Make sure you forward it to others so everybody knows and it becomes a smart and savvy shopper. And stay tuned for much more coming from Bees with capital Bees. See you soon.